Hi everyone, this is Janeko from Atlas 3DSS and today we have one of the most important videos yet, which is, let's face it, it's step one in your uh, 3D printing with resin journey. You probably have seen this test uh, going around the internet. This is called an Amerilabs town test and it's used to calibrate your machine with your specific resin and it's one of the most complete tests. It's the one that we advise uh, to use to everyone. Uh, that's why probably you see it so much. Uh, and we are going to use some real life images of what I'm going to describe, but I'm going to use the test right here because just it's it's easier for me to do it like this so i can go around and just uh use the actual test and you can see what you are missing in your actual amerilabs town test when you have it in your hands so let's see how to actually read this thing let's start with the front this here we call it the checkerboard pattern you can see looks like a checkerboard and there's two things here, and probably you don't know the names of these things, but let's call it the upper part. Let's let's say it's let's call it white on the checkerboard, and this is the black part. It's uh, the recessed area. It's like the black part on the checkers. So the ones that are raised, the white ones, we call it positives, and the black ones will be our negative ones. As you see on the test, they are perfectly aligned. They just meet there. They just meet on each corner. That's what actually you want with a perfect calibrated machine. That's the first and the most telltale sign of all. By the way, I'm using the supported version and I explain why. Because being raised like this ensures that uh, the higher exposure used at the bottom layers that are used to basically, let's face it, cook the raft into the build plate doesn't affect any of the readings on the actual test. Um, so yeah, that's why we also advise to use this version instead of the flat one on the build plate. So let's continue. We have the checkerboard. And I'm gonna put some images on the screen when I describe the overexposure and underexposure terms. Let's try to explain what each of these terms means. So underexposure means that you are not curing or polymerizing the resin properly. So what happens is there's actually a myth that has been creating and which is resin needs to be cured properly with the target pixels that were chosen by the slicer to provide the detail that you actually want. So there's two ways of actually screwing up the details on the miniature. But when you see uh, the details are kind of washed out, you have either the upper bounds of exposure or the lower bounds of exposure. And to those we call overexposure when it's too much or underexposure when it's too little. Basically, they produce kind of the same visual cues, but they are not the same. What we actually want is the perfect amount, and this is why we use this test. So when you print your test, the first thing, the first thing that you are going to take a picture, oh, by the way, wash the test, but don't cure it. Why? Because curing sometimes uh, makes the test expand. That's what happens when you cure resin. It expands. And by expanding, you are going to skew some of the results on the test, so it's not it's gonna, not going to be as accurate. And if it's still dripping wet, most of these cavities will be filled with IPA, acetone, or denated alcohol, whichever you use. Uh, so it will be kind of hard to read. So wash it, rinse it thoroughly, and let it dry then take some pictures or evaluate it yourself. Um, usually it's easier to just come to our Discord uh, and ask what we think. <laughs> so let's see. As we said, we want these to look like the one in the slicer, just perfectly meeting each corner on the positive and the negative. 
what we are going to see when they are underexposed, you are going to see the negative expands. So if the negative is, is bigger, these corners of the negative would actually connect. So you will not actually see the connection, the connection between the squares because the negatives will have basically merged into the next negative. Um, so that's a sign that you are underexposing, basically. Uh, on the other hand, if you see the exact opposite, if you see this part right here, expanding, squishing, making this negative almost squished uh, and really stretched out, that's a sign of clear overexposure. Um, you will see on the underexposure, you will see that the negative, you will have kind of waviness across the negatives. This is because the resin is not properly cured on the targeted layers. So you, they are basically, in simple terms, they are flimsy. <laughs> on the other hand, if you have overexposure, you will have, imagine a pillow that's really stuffed and it begins to pillow and creates a lip where the positive expands and creates like a curvature which is hard to see sometimes so you have to know what you are looking for in terms of overexposure and underexposure so those were the checkerboard patterns on an underexposed and overexposed test next thing let's see we have the slits these are slits that we have on the upper part of the front of the test and you want the most, you want all of them, the most open you can get, basically. Usually you can get till the point fours, fine, with no problems at all. For, uh, but the point fours till point one are kind of difficult to get, but they are achievable. You just have to fine tune it really small amounts. So this is the second part over here. This is the same thing. But we use this for another thing, which is, I'm gonna hover with my mouse over here, this part right here, if this doesn't print at all, or print super flimsy where it basically it will zigzag, like this, uh, that's underexposure, you don't want that, that's underexposure. Other things that we look for, on this ring here, if it's broken or not connected in any way, again, underexposure. This crosshair, it's another telltale. If it doesn't print properly, once again, underexposure. Top of the test, we have a couple of different things going on here. And this pattern over here, if you can print all of it, and if you can clearly see it, and if you rub your finger against it and you can actually feel it, uh, if it doesn't print properly, you are underexposed. And if it's too rough, probably all of these little divots and these squares expanded in such a way that they are going to create a rough texture that you can feel. Another telltale sign of overexposure is these buildings over here, as you can see, they all have spaces between them. On really overexposed tests, you will see the buildings completely merged into each other. They expand in such a way that they interconnect between themselves. That's a clear case of overexposure. Then, let's go to the second and third most important parts of the actual Amerilabs town test for uh, you to read, which are, we call it the space needle, because, yeah, it's a space needle. Uh, if you don't get this, and this is why it's so important for you, when you print the test, before you wash it, because this is such a fragile part, try to see if you had it, because if you break it during washing, well, at least you know it was there before you broke it. You, you need to have this space needle. If you don't have it, usually you are underexposed. Last part, you have these rows right here. 
these rows right here, they will not print as stiff as they are here, but they are a good representation on the strength of the supports that you are using on your model. So one thing that you want is, and I'm going to give you some values, they are rough values, but they work for us, which are, you want on an RGB screen, so your Alagumars, your Chidi, your Anycubic Photon with RGB screens, you want at least three and a half rows of pillars to have a proper exposed and the supports with the minimum tensile resistance to hold on to a model. You want one, two, three, and then you have you want half of these rows over here to be printed and the, the, the last row will be super flimsy, probably it will topple down uh, to one side or the other, but if they, it's printed at least half, it will be awesome. If you have four rows, awesome too. If you have five rows, probably you are entering the realm of overexposure. So what you do is adjust lower. So you decrease your exposure so this fifth row doesn't actually print. So those that was the value that we have seen work the best for RGB screens, but mono screen screens are more efficient. So what they do is with lower values of exposure, they actually provide better detail and better tensile resistance on the supports. So with the same value, you will see at least four rows, complete four rows of, of pillars printed. You will have one, two, three, and four. You don't actually want the fifth row. If you have it, you have to check it with the checkerboard to see if the positives are not too expanded or the top of the buildings, it's also not too expanded. So you basically, we take any side of the test that gives us one uh, idea of what actually is going on and then we look at the rest of the test to see if we have the same visual cues of what's happening. If you have less than four rows, I'm sorry, you are underexposing. Um, the details will not, uh, the details on your model will not actually print properly and the supports on your model will not print properly or if they print they will not hold on with the the intended tensile resistance that they were designed for. So you need the correct exposure for them to hold on. So yeah guys, um, I hope this was useful for everyone. Feel free to ask anything on our Discord. Everyone is more than used to see the Amerilabs down test by now, it's almost like the Bible. And if you guys have any question, I hope this video was useful for every newcomer or every single one of you that has been printing but didn't actually know if they were under or over or if they, was, they were just eyeballing it. I hope this was useful for everyone. See you guys on the next one and enjoy.